All right, what is up, everybody? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Chris with Monsters Under Our Bed. We cover true crime, mystery to the missing. And today we have a special show and a special guest. Uh, but before we uh, go into that, uh, before we get started, we always like to get back by featuring the missing. So I'm going to quickly pull up this here. And this is sent in uh, by a special request. This is... Uh, Austin Fulford, uh, he went missing out of Misha Waka, Indiana. He is he was 27 years old, went missing on July 11th of this year. So it's been a few months. Uh, he last spoke to his mother on the phone uh, in a land uh, last known to be at a landmark recovery center uh, in Misha Waka, Indiana. He is 6'1 and 165 pounds with brown hair, brown eyes. So he's a, he's a tall guy. Um, family has not seen or heard from him since, and they are concerned for his well-being. So uh, there's a couple of photos of him. And if you have any information, oh, also, it looks like he's got two tattoos, a uh, crab one on his lower leg, and um, not sure what that is, but a... Uh, Two, uh, two tattoos on his lower leg there. And if you have any information, you can call 765-653-4114. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Uh, and real quick before I introduce Jason, let me... Uh, I just did a quick poll just to kind of see uh, how many of you are familiar with the Jason Landry case. Uh, and it looks like we've got a whopping 70% no, 24% yes, and a few not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and end that uh, because we will uh, dive into this case. We will be talking about a few other things, but this will be kind of the main topic of the show. And so I'm going to go ahead and end that. So I'm excited to uh, have Jason on and talk about this case because I've heard of the name. Um, but never actually delved into the case. And this is a wild one for those that are familiar with the Daniel Robinson case. This has got uh, the same exact kind of vibes. Uh, it's it's very strange. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, the co-host for today's show and our special guest, Jason Watts. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, bud. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming on. It's it's been a while. Yeah, it has been a while. Uh, how have you been? Good, my friend. Good. Uh, the last time we had you on, I don't think you are now a, a PI, right? Uh, yes, I'm now a licensed private investigator for the state of Texas. That's awesome. Because uh, last time we had you on, uh, we were covering the Brandon Lawson case. And we were hoping there would be some kind of finality to that uh, with finding some remains. But that turned out that because uh, what little remains you found, I guess, what did you find and what were the results? I guess I should ask. Well, uh, in January of 2022, uh, I led a small search party in the vicinity where uh, Brandon went missing and we located uh, clothing that is consistent with the clothing that Brandon was last known to be wearing. A follow-up search conducted by the Texas Rangers uh, found human remains. Um, the remains have been to two separate laboratories in an attempt to identify who they belong to. But unfortunately, due to the exposure to the elements and the time that has passed and so little remains being found, they have not been able to extract enough genetic information to give them a full DNA profile to compare to Brandon's DNA. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> basically what they found would would fit in, in the palms of my hand. That's how little they found. And so yeah. with it being exposed to open sunlight and elements for eight years, it de degraded the remains heavily. Yeah. Uh, the last we heard from law enforcement is that they may go out and conduct a further search of the area in the hopes of finding additional human remains that will uh, be able to be tested. Yeah, and hopefully, uh, you know, uh, DNA testing has come a long way, and I'm sure it, uh, it's going to go leaps and bounds again, hopefully, and maybe uh, what you guys have eventually will 
they can test again maybe down the road but uh yeah because it seems like you know last time we had you on it seemed like everything was positive it was pretty much yeah they they found at least something of him and um but now uh kind of taking a step back so but yeah. now oh go ahead well it's it's unfortunate but uh yeah it has happened um I think the Ranger is going to try to do a couple of different things with the lab that may, uh, you know, may produce something um, different results. Yeah, but uh, at this point, I think in I'm thinking he he's going to have to go back out. Unfortunately, hopefully, find some more that you can use. Yeah, what a really crazy uh, case. That's the Brian and Lawson case. If for anybody that's in the chat not familiar with that, I have covered that. Uh, after the show, you can go check out that. I've got many videos, even interviews with Jason Watts on it. It's a it's a wild case. Um, but today we're going to focus on Jason Landry. So I thought I'd start out with a, I got about an eight minute video we'll play. And at any time while I'm playing it, uh, if you want to jump in on anything that's uh, in this, uh, cause I took about like three videos uh, from news reports and just kind of put it together as, uh, as close to a timeline as I could. And then we'll play that. And then I'm sure I'll have a bunch of questions along with the, the chat. And then uh, we'll, we'll move on to the next stage if that works for you. Excellent. Absolutely. Okay. All right, buddy. I will uh, load up the video here. Let's see. Here we go. And then uh, let me know if you uh, get a message on that, what we talked about earlier. But uh, Yes, absolutely. And uh, I'll be more than happy to post that. So awesome. here is the video for you guys uh, to get uh, familiar with this case. It's like I said, it's got the Daniel Robinson vibes. ...has an unsavory okay. theory Oops, about what's happening. Uh, here we go. Sheriff's office. These were the very first moments, the beginning of a heartbreaking mystery. We're all one, one phone call away from tragedy. Hello. Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Mrs. Landry. Yeah. My name is Trooper Flores with the Texas Highway Patrol. I'm currently at a uh, crash scene involving a 2003 Nissan Altima. The vehicle was abandoned. The back windows busted out and found uh, Jason David Landry's driver license and wallet and personal effects inside this backpack. What he did not find, what nobody's found, is a driver of that wrecked car, 21-year-old Jason Landry. Landry is a Texas State University student who on one cold winter night was on his way home to Missouri City for winter break, but he never made it. So, uh, just a question. Uh, so, in December, in that area, what do you think the temperatures get down to? Uh, it can kind of depend. Uh, you know, we have the old saying, Texas weather is bipolar. You'll have some years where it's 80 degrees in December, and then oh, wow. you'll have years where it's quite cold. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe that night the temperature was in the 40s, but there was a, a winds coming out of the north. Ooh. And when you factor in the wind chill, it felt like it was in the probably mid to low 30s. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's cold. Uh, that's refrigerator temperature right there. Um, yeah, that yeah. that for us here in Texas is cold. Uh, I know some people yeah. in the north are like, ah, that's nothing. But yeah, no, right. 30 degrees, we're putting heavy coats on. Yeah, uh, I hear you. So what do we know about that house, the 2379? Is no it abandoned? It's abandoned. Nobody okay. lives there, but I don't know if you saw all his clothes and stuff. But he's completely naked wherever he's at. And there's <clears> blood <throat> on his underwear. All right, so we got a 27. White male. Okay. Go ahead and let him have that. Cool. You want me to have it all or just this? Yeah. Okay. You know, as a dad, your primary role is to protect your family. <laughs> And you'll do anything for them. And this took place, uh, thank you, Jim. What city in Texas did this happen? This is Loling, Texas. Is that how you pronounce it? Luling. Luling. Okay. Luling. I'm glad I asked you because I'll probably, I would have been saying Loling. Yeah. All right. Luling, Texas. Luling is a, a small city population, about 6,000. Uh, it's oh, wow. south, southwest of Austin. Oh, okay. 
Right on. Thank you so much, Jim, for the donation. And uh, we'll keep going. Great question. These are Jason's, whatever they call this, Salt Flat Road or whatever, on the washboard. And these are Jason's clothes lying in the road. It's hard to see. Those are two pairs of socks, socks, shorts. It's underwear. I'm about, oh, I don't know, 20 feet ahead. You couldn't really see him. This is his flip flops. This is his t shirt. You can see where the, at least this is where they went. I don't know, these are the track marks. And you can go down here and you can see where the car went off. You can see the wheels and hit down here by this tree and fence. Now this video is taken literally the next day in the morning after the crash. Is that correct? It's taken within. Uh, it's it's kind of the, it, technically it's the same day. Oh, okay, so, sure. The, yeah, the volunteer firefighter found the car at twelve thirty one. This video is probably taken around six thirty a.m. I think or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what five six hours later? And they didn't recover his clothes and stuff like that. Um, God, I know Steve, if I had Steve on, a uh, former detective, he would be, probably be raising some concerns about that, especially finding blood on some of the clothing, or is it just the underwear? They they found a small spot of blood on the waistband of Jason's underwear. And they believe he poked himself on the barbed wire uh, when Ooh. he exited the vehicle. The vehicle was found, uh, crashed into the tree and up against a barbed wire fence. Okay, that... That would make sense. That would make sense. And Jason walked this way towards Luling or whoever. God, please be with him. I mean, this this is kind of tough to watch because this is a father that is just arriving to the first time and has no idea what condition his son's in. Uh, knows that his son's been in a terrible wreck, but he's just gone. Uh, and now he's now he's out there by himself, right? Because I assume the car's been impounded, right? And um, man, I can't imagine what's going through his mind right now. I found um, Jason's stuff um, right, you know, right there, right, uh, right where the, those rocks in the road are, about you know, thirty feet. This is his toiletry bag when he came home with his toothbrace and shaving cream and that's his drink cup and the car ran off the road right around this curve the um you can see that where you go in that's the oil field thing and then right around that curve about a oh, i don't know 50 feet past that you can see where it ran off the road so this is i don't think 200 you know I don't think it's a, you know, maybe a football field, maybe a little bit more where I found his stuff, his clothes lying in the road. Oh, God, be with him. And, oh, I just, I, I pulled up this video. We're about halfway done with this video, but was this taken the day before or the day of this kind of, this video that they put up with him? He's rolling minutes. a joint and stuff. That was taken about 30 minutes before he left his college dorm room. Wow. wow. So right before the right before all this happened, that shirt that he's wearing is the shirt that the father found. Oh, him. that's but right. Oh, wow. Be. Jason Landry, a Texas State University student. Right now they're searching for him. Search efforts resumed this Authorities morning. found his car. New details surrounding the family story. still does not have answers. It's mind boggling that on a near freezing night with little to no clothes, Landry could oh, have yeah, gotten very close, far wow. from that crash scene. Yet he seemingly vaporized. And the man in charge of the investigation has an unsavory theory about what happened. So one of the possible working theories is that he could have been completely devoured? I mean, yes, sir. I don't think hogs killed him, right? I do think that um, if hogs are opportunistic, you know, if a hog in December encounters a meal, whether that's a human or not, I don't think a hog's going to skip that. Captain Jeff Ferry thinks there's a good chance Landry was eaten by no, well, hogs are, I have no idea. I've never encountered a hog. We don't have hogs that, or that I know of anyway. Um, but, uh, or at least wild hogs, I should say. Uh, are, are they aggressive? They can be. If you, wow. if they feel threatened or, or cornered, 
they will charge uh, mama hog will charge to defend her you know piglets um uh, their first usually their first instinct is like every other animal to run but sure. again if they feel threatened or cornered they they will defend themselves absolutely is they usually roam in packs like wild hogs yes. they? not, they're not they're not necessarily by nature a pack animal but uh -huh. generally they are in packs yes yeah <clears throat> interesting yeah when i first heard this i'm like because this is this is all new to me I, i've known of the case and the name but actually not known the details and this is uh, i see a comment hogs won't eat people uh they there have been documented cases where yes they have yeah yeah and that's why he's it's one of his theories he just kind of talked about that in the the detective I, it's a short clip of his bigger interview but yeah he talks about that yeah that's wild Yes, they do. Uh, I see another comment down here. Sorry, I'm just trying to answer questions as we're going. Oh, no, you're good. Go ahead, buddy. That's one of the things I love about coming on with you is interacting with the audience. It's so it's so. Cool. Yeah, this is what it's. Yeah, this is what yeah. it's for. Uh, hogs will eat bones. Yes. Uh, and, and I've learned this from working on Brandon Lawson's case because the same thing has come up. Right. The hogs will eat anything they can get their jaw around. Now, there are parts of a human anatomy that they can't such as the skull and the pelvis they cannot op they basically can't oh. open their mouth any wider than an apple so okay. anything wider than that they're not going to be able to uh eat, really eat now they might wait uh if it's deteriorated enough to where they can break it apart and yes oh sure uh there will be parts of the skeletal system remaining yeah um wow that uh, it's it's so wild Okay, I'll keep going. And uh, yeah, like I said, anything uh, you go Giant ahead and point out halfway through here. Kent Landry thinks that conclusion is a little too convenient. Maybe it makes you feel better to just say, blame it all on Jason. There are most certainly questions about the investigation itself. Take, for example, Jason's car. Initially, it was not properly secured, admits the Caldwell County Sheriff's Office. And in my mind, it's secured in the tow lot. Um, I, we had assumed that DPS would have secured that, and that's not what happened. Jason's dad is the one who found... And what did they mean, uh, not secured? At the lot itself, or...? Not secured the crime scene. If oh. You, I mean, it. there's not enough evidence to actually call it a crime scene. because Sure. Crime, yeah. But I, I think that they should have collected the clothing and conducted... I mean, if, if you just come across a car crashed and you say drunk driver, I'd be like, okay, I can buy that. Yeah. But when you find the clothes, that would concern me. Sure. Because, I mean, my first thought would be somebody's walking around here naked somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I mean, I think that evidence should have been secured and collected all of it. Right. Um, That's just my opinion. I mean, yeah, I'm, no, you know, I'm sure many I'm, would agree. And I know if I had Steve on, uh, I know he would be uh, just shaking his head right now. Um, there's there's many things with the Daniel Robinson case that happened. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, thank you, our dog for the five dollars. Appreciate it. Um, so we'll keep going. Jason's here. cell phone in that car the next day as it sat unlocked. The back window. Did, did you think he might have busted out that back window, or is that just from the crash? Or do we know? They initially did speculate that he kicked the back window out, but once they kind of dug further into the car and stuff like that, they made the determination that the windshield, the back windshield, was probably busted out when the vehicle collided with the tree. Oh, Matter, okay. Uh, well, you can't kind of see it in this footage, but down near the bumper support, you can see. Bart that has been scraped off. So that that vehicle did uh, collide with that tree. As a matter of fact, there's a chunk of bark mix missing out of the tree still to this day. Oh, interesting, interesting. So it hit it pretty pretty hard. Yeah, they. Sp I think they were able to determine the car was moving somewhere around 40, 30 to forty miles an hour when it collided with the tree. Wow. Was it a was it a head on or? I mean, it looked like a head on kind well, of. Well, basically, what happened once we kind of. I know we'll we'll look at a map of the area together. But yeah, uh -huh. he was traveling north, and uh, you guys all saw that curve there in the video. Yeah, I think what happened was he overcorrected on that curve for whatever reason. Now there are a lot of deer out there; we see them all the time. They run across. The There's coyotes. Um, he could have very well swerved to avoid hitting an animal, and that actually caused the vehicle to spin around and travel backwards and collide into the fence. Oh, uh huh. Interesting. Interesting. 
Okay, we'll keep it's going here. Who's that? It was a crime. Maybe. We found Jason Landry's car in a junkyard. And when it was dropped here about a year ago, it still contained Jason's belongings. Wow. If you go down that road of not believing anything happened to Jason that night, um, then you're not going to go down that road of talking to people. Abel Pena spent 26 years in the FBI. He's now a private investigator and is working the Jason Landry case pro bono. He thinks the Caldwell County Sheriff's Office is convinced there was no crime, so they haven't explored every avenue. And he's right. There's no evidence of a crime. Caldwell County is sitting on a mountain of collected DNA from Jason's car, but has no plans to process it because there's no evidence of foul place. Oh, yeah, it looks like, uh, sorry to keep pausing, but yeah, it definitely looks like there's a lot more damage to the Jason's back end car, there. But has no plans to process yeah. it because there's no evidence of foul play, says Captain Ferry. Maybe there's not evidence of a crime because you haven't collected and processed enough evidence. So you would have to discount all the evidence we do have to make that argument. You When's the last input happening on the phone? Here. The captain's theory is that Landry, under the influence, made a wrong turn, got lost, and died somewhere in the wilderness. The backbone of his belief is based on Jason's phone, or rather, how it pinged that night. We know he was in the car by himself when he left San Marcos. Okay. And that the car didn't stop. If his car did not stop until it crashed, the thinking goes, then Jason did not meet anyone along the way who killed him. Pena says phone pings are just not precise enough to make that call. And he thinks something happened at this ruling intersection. We strongly believe that something happened at the intersection, uh, which either caused him to go down that road, if it was him, or um, perhaps he was not driving that car that night. Ferry doesn't buy it, but a fresh set of eyes just might. And that appears to be coming as the Texas Attorney General's cold case squad has now agreed to take another look at the Jason Landry case. Better late than never, says Jason's father. We pray that we will have answers and we'll know the truth. But if it's God's will and we don't know, well, we know where he is. Houston, things took a turn on a long gravel okay. road. Oh, I think we're caught up there. Um, so let me grab this, and I, I'm sure this is probably better for you to answer. I know part of this. Uh, was his phone left in the car? Uh, I yes. believe between the console, right? Yes. The, somewhere phone was, the phone was found by Kent Landry between the in that little spot between the seat and the console. That oh, yeah, where it drops down. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. the, pho the last digital... Uh, Footprint. Really, the last digital footprint from the phone occurred at 11.26 p.m., and the car was found at 12.31 a.m., just a little over an hour later. Yeah, and I have a, a short little uh, detailed timeline, but I'll uh, go through that. Uh, so, yeah, we'll look at that. Did he have a Fitbit or anything like that? I don't think so, right? No, not to our knowledge. Okay. If he Thank did, you. he did not have it on him at the time uh -huh. he was out there. Um, so thank you so much, June. So just, uh, just a quick overview, uh, from the video. Uh, so this is December 13th, 2020. This was during, uh, COVID time. Uh, he leaves the San Marcos apartment, which he had just recently moved out there for his, um, college. Is that right? I believe, uh, to move out there for. Yeah. Yeah. He was attending yeah. Texas State University. I'm already seeing some comments. Uh, uh, -huh in the chat was he rear-ended uh no we do not believe so there is no contact uh contact evidence on the bumper or any other part of the car the investigators are reasonably confident it was a single vehicle collision the car did not come into contact with any other vehicles and you, and you would probably see maybe if it did come in with another contact with another car you'd probably see some paint transfer yeah. Uh, um, did he roll the car? No, the car did not roll. Um, so, and we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, so I'll, I'll quickly run through this and uh, if you want to correct anything on this. So he left San no. Marcos here. Oh, no, go ahead. Okay. So he left San Marcos here and he traveled past Martindale. Uh, he left at uh, approximately just before around 11 PM. 
uh, and he was going to be heading to his family's home, right? Yes, in Missouri City, which is on, I believe, the north west side of Houston. Northwest side. Okay. I could be wrong about that. Uh, it's it's it, Missouri City is part of the Houston metro area. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and so he continued down this uh, Interstate 80 here. And uh, at about 11.05, uh, he passes Martindale here. And then at 11.15, he continues passing these little towns, uh, Prairie Lea. Uh, what is that? Stairtown. Stairtown. Interesting. Uh, and then 11.24, about a half hour into his drive, he enters Lowling, Texas on I-80 or Interstate 80. As he moves through the intersection, um, this is where he quits the Waze app. I'm assuming Waze is some kind of uh, app. To, is that for like uh, – like It's a navigational app. Navi yeah, that's – thank you. And uh, then he starts using a Snapchat Yes. And this is where things went wrong is apparently he was supposed to take a right at this intersection at Austin Street in Mag uh, Magnolia. Magnolia. Thank you. Uh, he was supposed to take a right, but unfortunately he kept going straight. And right here, apparently in this area is where his last uh, digital footprints was. Mm -hmm. Um and that's around uh, what 1126, I think, or something like that, when he lost the last digital footprint, something around in there. Uh, and then 115034, uh, so just a few minutes, uh, 10 minutes later, uh, going down Salt Flat Roads, uh, it seems that uh, he kind of overcorrected on this gravel road and spun out and hit a tree. And uh, here's just kind of a couple looks at it. And so we'll actually look at the Google Earth, and uh, here it is. And this is the approximate area. I think we're I'm the, pretty sure those are the that's the cluster of trees. Yeah, right there. This right here. This, uh, as you can see, this is from this photo is from May of 2011. So it's an no. old photo. So the tree has since grown up much taller. Right. Okay. Makes sense, but uh, so, and there's a barbed wire. So what is it like? Kind of a barbed wire fence that just That's went exactly before. Yeah, before yeah. the trees and everything. And the, the the fence is basically like right up against the trees. Yeah. Oh, okay. Interesting. And uh, so spun out and uh, ended up hitting a tree, and then. Uh, found uh most of his belongings his phone the keys were in the ignition or yep um we believe the vehicle was still in the drive position the gear wow and then one thing i, I mentioned to you before we started when i uh and it's the, kind of the same thing with daniel robinson case uh because a lot of similarities you've you got a car crash um and then you find clothing strung out uh and basically the clothing that he was supposedly the person was wearing. So thing, the first thing that comes to my mind is hypothermia, because uh, when you get hypothermia, your body tricks itself into thinking it's really hot and you start ditching clothes left and right. Yeah. It's um, called paradoxal undressing. Interesting. Oh, wow. And um, so, yeah. And the clothes were kind of strung out uh, quite a ways back. So he, it was like he crashed here. And then the clothing you said was kind of like strung out, kind of going back the way he came from. Yes, it's correct. They, we believe he exited the vehicle, began walking south back towards Luling from the direction he came from. And right after you, as you're going out of that little curve past that least road there, uh -huh. and that's where his backpack was found. Uh, the, the tumbler containing his dead beta fish that fish we believe was, uh, died as a result of you know the accident yeah um and his clothing was found uh in succession like it looks like he's taking his clothes off as he's walking right right uh and, and that's then, oh uh, sorry, go ahead oh and i was just gonna say that's kind of like daniel robinson's because the same thing he, you don't have all well kind of he did have a pile of some clothes but then he did have like some socks and stuff strung out 
Uh, who knows if the wind blew it, but it, it did some similarities. But yeah, clothes just kind of uh, going in a direction there. Um, uh, were the clothes bloody or torn? No. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good question. Just the, the only really blood was on the underwear, which you think attributed to the barbed wire? Yeah, it was just a very small spot of blood about the size of a eraser on a pencil. Right. Yeah, they did. I think we they pulled that up for just a second. Um, uh, Teresa says, sketchy, very sketchy. I see um, one question. Was he drunk? No, we do not believe he was drunk. Uh, maybe uh, under the influence of marijuana, but possibly yes. I, I I'll be honest. I was a pothead. I'm sure people because now it's illegal. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I was a pothead for a couple decades, and um, I mean, I drove fine. If anything, I drove paranoid, and I would drive like five, ten miles under the speed limit. So, um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I did see one question. Why was the back of the car caved in? That was the result of the tree. So it's almost like it spun and then it, it went back into the tree. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I don't have anything to really. <laughs> so uh, this is stupid, but I'm using a Tic Tac box. Let's uh, do it. it looks like what happened. Yeah, I see my, my image is blurry, so you can't tell. That's okay. My background. But they think the vehicles, when it overcorrected, it's spun. It spun around yep. and then went backwards at an angle. And so the back end collides with the tree and then boom, up against the fence. That's, I, sorry, folks. That's crappy. It's what I have in front of me. Hey, uh, it's the first time for everything. We're going to use yeah, a TikTok. So the rear end of the car impacted the tree. I mean, it's it's definitely clearly shows the, the the most damage, clearly. I mean, this is part, I'm assuming this is part of the, the, the bumper yeah. down here hanging. So uh, there, there's one question. Uh, there is a statement in the chat and I want to go ahead and answer it because this has been brought up in Jason's case. Sure. Uh, unless someone laced a joint that would have no bearing on this, just so everybody knows uh, they tested the marijuana. It was not laced. Yeah. A lot of people think marijuana gets laced and, you know, as a pothead for two decades, I, I, I've never even known of a, a friend of a friend that I, I mean, there was stories, but I, there's no one in my circle of group or their associates that ever had laced, uh, even though I'm sure, and, and it does, it has happened. Uh, that's, I, that's brought up now with fentanyl coming around uh, and that getting put in everything. Now that <laughs> is a whole new ball game, but uh, yeah, it's not as a uh, thing. Yeah. Um, could he have hit his head? Yes, that is possible that he did hit his head. Uh, there's no blood spatter or anything inside the car, but it is possible that he hit his head. Yes, that's a definite possibility. Yeah. Um, there was another one. Does someone live in the area? So there are some homes in the area, but they're not in the immediate area of the crash site. Uh, this is this area where the car was found is mostly all oil filled equipment. Yeah, and oil filled tank battery. Yeah, you can kind of see there's not really anything out there. Um, yeah, wow, that's yeah. barren, very barren. Um, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and put this out because I know it's gonna come up. The volunteer firefighter that found Jason's car, there has been some speculation around him. He was given a polygraph test and he passed it. Oh, okay, yeah, I never really suspected him, but people in the community you know that doesn't stop them from talking but i just wanted everyone in the chat to know the volunteer fire to fighter has been fully cooperative he has answered all questions and he passed his lie detector yeah he volunteered to take a lie detector that's awesome and uh yeah i mean when it comes to this day and age uh anybody that's brought up that's in a case they're they're gonna be put under the spotlight no matter what you know, yeah. filled you in. Uh, sadly, that's just uh, uh, also law enforcement did do a geo uh, conduct a geofence warrant around of the area around the crash site. Oh, uh, no other cell phones were found pinging in the area. Interesting, other than the volunteer firefighters, which I mean, he called so naturally his phone's gonna be in the area. Uh, question How is the cell service out there? It's kind of patchy. Uh, okay. Some areas you got so, cell phone service. It's, it just it kind of really depends on where you're standing, honestly. Um, I think at the crash site, I have decent 
coverage and then uh, in areas where we searched before I have no coverage at all. Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, so I did see um, some highlights of uh, a, a search and rescue that took place and they talked about like 82 points. Uh, I think I can pull yeah, it Techstar up. came in, uh, they conducted a drone search and took photographs. And they put the photographs through a technology that helps identify uh, different colors or man-made objects. That gave them 82 areas of interest to check out. Uh, they checked out all of those and none of them panned out. Since Jason had no clothing on after he disrobed, they focused on white for bone. And that Oh, worked. okay. Yeah, and they checked all that uh, out and it did not turn into anything. Bummer. Bummer. Let's see if I can find that. Uh... No, I've seen. Oh, I think this is it, but it's not. Uh, let me see if I can. Uh, this comment here from Kathleen Harris: Those trees don't look very big now. Uh, the tree that in the car impacted is actually it's a pretty good sized tree now. Uh, yeah, I think I've got a screenshot of it. Yeah, well. bear in mind, uh, Chris's uh, photo, street photos. The photographs were taken in 2011. A tree can grow pretty good in 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 uh, almost 10 years. Yeah, where is that one? Uh, there, uh, yeah, that you can that picture doesn't really quite do it. Yeah, but you can actually see the tree back there. Yeah, and those yeah. branches they believe that's what shattered the back windshield. Oh, that would make sense. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah, they're hanging down. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you actually look, uh, I think it was in that footage you had, you can see twigs and stuff laying up on that uh, upper space behind the back seat. You can see twigs and stuff like that just sitting there. Um, let's see, uh, In Lulling, Texas, Jason's see, car was. Uh, that was. That yeah, be it. Oh, yeah, yeah, right there. State University yeah. student. Who I'll on turn board. it down here and be just after. These are. Jason's today. Yeah, you can actually see the barbed wire fence there. And okay, here we go. Uh, sorry, Jason. No, you're good. But he never made it. Wow. Yeah, you can kind of see it back there. That. Yeah. I wish I had. I don't think I have any of my photos on this computer. I all mine are on my tablet. But yeah, you can see the barbed wire there. Uh, yeah, and you can see the branches uh, just back yeah. there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. No airbags, though. I, I, I mean, you could. No, you, it doesn't look like the airbags deployed. Because it's the bumper. So I wonder. Um, I'll have to look up that model and see what's going on. Because, uh, yeah, it's hypothermia. Oh, go ahead. It's a 2003, so it does have an airbag, at least on the driver's side. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Because I, I know, uh, you know, when we covered the Daniel Robinson case, uh, one of the things uh, we were kind of considering is either hypothermia or he took off his clothes because the airbags did deploy in that one. And, uh, you know, I, I know they've made them a lot safer, but they, you know, they use chemicals that would actually, you know, you get chemical burns and, you know, would could, if that was the case, uh, you know, could maybe cause him to derobe, but yeah, maybe not in this, uh, instant here. There's actually still pieces of Jason's car there at the base of that tree, like fragments of glass and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, even to this day. Wow. So, um, let's see if I can go back to it. But yeah, this is... Uh, oh, that's where the house is. So it's it's much further yeah. up here. Yeah, um, and there, just so everybody knows, that house was checked out. It, nothing... Nothing because that, that was abandoned originally, right? Uh, it's not, it, it's it's owned, it's just the person doesn't live there, he just has the property and goes out to it sporadically when he wants to get away. And uh huh, yeah, interesting. Um, so I think okay, so yeah, we're just uh, yeah, you're kind of yep, uh, right not, in there. It's it's hard oh, to tell because that picture, oh, I think it's old. this one, I think. Yeah, actually, whoa, 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 that that may be the tree, right? Uh, swing, ah, crap. 
because that gully is just after it. Oh, just after it? Yeah, just after the crash site. That may be the tree right there. One of these guys here. Uh, it's not that one. It may be actually be that one to the left of the... This guy here? Yeah, and it's just since grown. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, you can kind of see where these branches would have been hanging over. I mean, that's that's a good size tree right there. And yeah, I'm trying to see if there's a cross or anything because I think they had a cross. But um, yeah. and you can see how tall this tree is. I mean, this is clearly one of the more thicker and that's trees. That's 2011. <laughs> the tree's right taller now. Yeah, right. I have um, actually. Let me see if I can send you something real quick. It may or may not let me. I'm going to try to send something to your email. Okay, uh, sure. Yeah, just, just keep talking. Uh, okay, uh, let me see what we got in chat here. And, yeah, uh, let, if you got any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, Jason's amazing. He, he's always amazing when it comes to just getting to the questions. Uh, and that's, that's really awesome for him to do that. Um, so he was – oh, I know how old he was. 21 uh, 21 there you go thank you yeah that was here's just kind of a uh 21 years old uh incident happened on december 13 2020 of course this is covid time uh still missing oh, darn it sorry let me do it and um and what's really wild uh, unlike the daniel robinson case is you know the crash happens at a, around exactly or approximately 11:34. This um, an hour later, the uh, volunteer firefighter uh, comes across his car. So it's not like for Daniel Robbins's case, there was uh, you know a huge time uh, gap before they actually found um, Daniel's vehicle. Um, Right. So we're, I mean, we're just talking an hour. So it's it's so bizarre that uh, that he's just uh, up and disappeared in that short uh, span of time, and uh, and then of course his poor father uh, showing up less than six hours later uh, from when the accident happened uh, to you know find his clothes strung out and everything. Um, and right. yeah, just what a what a tough situation. Yeah, very unfortunate. So, um, since all this, uh, what, what are some of the updates uh, until recent times uh, that you can discuss publicly as far as like searches? Well, uh, uh, any progression? Yes. We uh, we've conducted. We I joined a volunteer search team for Jason uh, in September of last year, so a year ago. Uh, several members of my team that were with me when I found Brandon Lawson have joined the team as well. And we've kind of formed the Jason Landry search team, as we call it. It's, it's a team of really good, dedicated volunteers, people that are just great. They want to find Jason. They've worked very hard. Uh, we've been, we've conducted, I think 10 or 11 searches since September of last year. Uh, we've covered, thousands of acres. Um, we've searched creek areas, creek beds, uh, everything within a mile radius of that crash site between the between the Jason Landry search team, Texar, and every any other search team that has come in uh, have covered a mile radius around that crash site. And we are confident that Jason is not within a mile radius of the crash site. Now, statistically speaking, uh, most lost people that are just lost wandering around, they're uh -huh. typically found within a mile to a mile and a half radius of their last known position. So uh -huh. uh, our future efforts will concentrate on the areas between the mile and the mile and a half radius of the crash site. So basically what I'm saying is we're expanding out. Sure. Uh, past that mile radius to look for him. Sure. Makes sense. Um and uh, I've seen this couple up a couple of times, and that's something I wanted to ask you. What is, uh, if if you want to share, um, what is the name of your company? Do you want to? So it's it's actually not my company. I am licensed through a company based out of Houston, uh, K Griff Investigations. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm licensed through them. It it is not my agency. 
Okay. Um, if at any time you want me uh, to put any contact information or anything, let me know. Maybe yeah. not in this live yeah. or in a future time. Uh, let me know. I'd be more than happy to promote whatever I can to help you out to uh, so you can help out the families. Whatever I can do on my platform, uh, I am here. Uh, uh, you know, I, I think honestly, uh, what can you see from there at the same time of night? Uh, so the nearest light is the light off that oil well tower that, or the oil well uh, tanks that you had, Chris, in in when we were on the, uh, uh, yep, on the road search. Now Jason's scent was actually tracked further south, uh, back behind that home, uh, and near. Oh, a, be uh, yeah, oh, you, behind the home. Yeah, yeah. So the home is right there. Yep they tracked his scent behind that home to that small pond and their theory in the initial days was uh that perhaps he fell in that pond and drowned so they called in a sonar team the sonar team came out and discovered an anomaly in the water so they made the determination to drain the pond oh uh, wow yeah and cadaver dogs even hit on the pond uh so they drained the pond but jason was not in the pond wow yes did they check hospitals to see if he could have been taken there yes yes they did yeah good question cunningham uh but yeah unfortunately nope didn't make it to the hospital uh, but that's interesting the scent uh went this direction which is the direction his clothes were coming i mean this is much further down uh i, I don't know the exact distance but uh maybe a 10 minute walk maybe give or take um from the crash site i don't know maybe somewhere yeah, around in there i can tell you i've walked down to the crash site at night it's pitch black man you cannot see your hand in front of your face oh wow yeah all you hear is it's actually in some ways it's very beautiful because you can see every single star oh. in the night sky but uh -huh. it's also kind of creepy because there's an oil pump jack near there and it just makes us groaning sound and then uh you hear coyote packs of coyotes off in the distance oh wow yeah it's very unnerving to be there at night sure sure um so I'll check the pond um and have we crossed county lines no uh we don't have any evidence that he is anywhere other than somewhere in the area of salt flat road um Again, they did a geofence warrant. If somebody came out there and picked him up, there would have to be some sort of communication between Jason and this person picking him up. And the sure. geofence warrant should have shown that. And it's, again, no other phones were pinging in the area other than, you know, the volunteer firefighters, which they already knew. Yeah. Um, the attorney general took over the case from the Caldwell County Sheriff's Office and we went through every single bit of evidence and they made the same determination that it was a single car accident. Jason stepped out of the vehicle and is probable to be somewhere in the area of the crash site and just has not been discovered yet. Wow. What a, what a shame and what a crazy, crazy case. Um, uh, do they suspect someone may have had him by the pond and moved him? No, because they focused in on that pond literally the next day. So uh, oh. there, there would have been some kind of sign or yeah, that yeah. there would have, I mean, if this person was out there moving around the body, how did he not get discovered by the, by the trooper, by the sheriff and by the volunteer fire department, where was his car? I mean, he didn't walk out there. And, right. And he would have to be pretty lucky to yeah. know exactly where he just wandered off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all at night. Uh, yeah. Um, crazy 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 um yeah, i know the i know the private investigator thinks something may have happened at that intersection i can't necessarily take that off the table but when i went to that intersection for the first time the first thing i noticed about it was man there's houses here around this intersection within pretty close proximity if some kind of confrontation occurred why did nobody hear it uh um where is this at that's the intersection of Austin and Magnolia. Oh, oh, okay. If something did happen at that intersection, 
again, you don't take anything off the table until you find your missing person. Uh, you go by what's most probable based on the evidence that you have. Um, Let's see here. Yeah. This is it. Yeah, so there's a church, there's a park, there's, yeah, you can literally see one of the houses right there. Uh, again, well, that's, that's not a, go to the left side of the road. Uh, you, oh, there, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, there's a home there. There's homes there. So if a confrontation occurred in that intersection, it had to have happened quickly and quietly. Right. I mean, there's been theories of carjacking. I don't really lend much credence to that theory because what carjacker carjacks a 17 year old vehicle, there wouldn't be a high value in it. If, if that right. Was, if he'd have been driving a pickup truck or a sports car. I, I, I could have potentially bought that. Sure. Yeah. Wait till he gets down the road and yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but that would have been a bad carjacking <laughs> with how the car ended up. So yeah. 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 Um, interesting though but yeah so what happened is he was coming down austin and he was supposed to take a right so he was supposed to go this way but no he was supposed to go the other way oh am i oh i'm turned yeah, around yeah yeah, yeah, I you're gotcha. <laughs> yeah I, so you can actually see the sign there that says interstate 10 to the right he so, should have taken the right and gone down magnolia and he didn't he gotcha straight. and then he continued this way right and then yep. it eventually uh it turns into uh, spruce, and then spruce turns into salt flats. Salt flats, right here. Yep. Yep. You hear right. it. Yep. Yeah. And let me, man. As soon as you get out there, man, you can tell you're in the oil it, field area. The oil field, those wells put off a a, a gas called H two S. It's a uh, very. It has a very sulfuric smell to it. Ooh. Yeah. So you smell it as soon as you get out there. We actually wear monitors on us that monitor the uh, levels of H2S because they are, it is not unheard of for the levels to get so bad they can kill a human. Wow. Yeah. A lot of those guys in the oil field, you'll see them wear those same monitors. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'll have to ask Tom about that. Cause I know he works in that industry and um, knows probably a lot about that. Um, so we're, we're about an hour. So, uh, man, are we already an hour into this? I know it goes so fast, oh. uh, but, uh, so I, I guess we'll switch. Uh, and if you still have some questions, uh, I, I'm sure Jace will be happy to answer and I'll, I'll try to look out for some, but, uh, I know you wanted to mention a, a book and, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I know the last time I came on, I shared some books with some of the crowd. Yeah. You, you, they, they seem to respond very positively to that. Right. Um, yeah, right. If everybody's, if anybody's looking for a good read, I have a really, really good one. And it, it really provides a lot of uh, good information as to how a private investigator uh, kind of works. Uh, it's actually about the Brianna Maitland case in Northern Vermont. Uh, so the book is called The Hunt. Ah, it's gonna blur it out. Uh, yep, I you got have a picture of it. Yeah, if you can bring that picture up. Yep. I oh actually let me do this. I, I, I had everything set up and for some reason. So yeah, here it is. Um The Hunt for Brianna Maitland, written yes, written by a very good friend of mine, private investigator by the name of Greg Overacker. Uh he is a former bounty hunter and uh -huh. licensed private investigator. He has worked on Brianna Maitland's case since 2006, and he uh, wanted to write a book about her disappearance to hopefully bring exposure to it. Yeah, and that's a case I I know of. I know I've seen the documentary. I, I can't remember it just because I've watched so many. Um, but if anybody, I know I'm trying to find that famous photo. I mean, it's it, I kind of saw it there, but uh, let me pull it up. This, I mean, this is. If anyone's probably seen this photo before, this is a pretty, oh, pretty popular photo. It, it's yep. so weird. That's poor Brianna's car backed into the, backed into the farmhouse. So basically, what happened was uh, Brianna May yeah. was a 17 year old uh, living in in Vermont. She uh -huh. clocked out of her job at the Black Lantern Inn, which is a local mom and pop owned inn and you know, diner. She was a dishwasher there. She clocked out at 1120 PM at night 
and at 12.30 a.m., her car was found a mile down, about a little over a mile. I just say a mile. It was like 1.1, 1.2. About a mile down the road, uh, backed into the side of this farmhouse. That's that is crazy, and and then she has any any leads or anything since then that they they they've questioned a lot of people. There have been some. The best thing I can really tell you to do, Chris, is read the book because it's just going to do it so much more justice than I ever. Should. Sure, sure. But uh, no, um, there have been uh, some local rumors. There's been a few people that they've s suspected, but nothing's ever panned out. Uh, Brianna was kind of living a little bit of a different lifestyle than most 17 year olds. I, I would say, I mean, she had moved out of her parents' house and uh, she was kind of doing what they call couch surfing, you know, uh -huh. stay, staying with different friends, stayed with a boyfriend at one time or another. Um, at the time of her disappearance, she was staying with a childhood friend. So she wasn't, she wasn't in a, in, in a locked down place for a long period of time. Um, but uh, she was very independent and I mean, she was a smart girl. Yeah. Uh, she had just recently passed her GED. Um, the, the day before the day she went missing, I think she took the test and passed it. And then she went shopping with her mother um, earlier in the afternoon. Uh -huh. And now, unfortunately, due to a, a very tragic set of circumstances, no one realized Brianna was missing until about, four or five days later uh, yeah so many potential leads lost uh, yeah well i mean again she was staying with the childhood friend and she had left a note for the friend that you know hey i'll be you know back later tonight blah 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 and she left the note for the friend on the counter and then she went to work well the friend came home saw the note and said okay brianna's working blah blah, blah. Uh -huh. put the note back on the counter and then the friend actually leaves to go visit her sister for the weekend so she didn't she didn't come home you know the next day and well, where the heck's brianna uh -huh. uh, she actually came so march 19th was on a friday night uh the friend came home monday and saw that the note was still there and thought okay maybe she you know she's just chilling at home with her parents or whatever maybe she went home stayed the night there and it was uh -huh. the next day she hadn't heard from brianna so she became concerned and called brianna's parents this would be on Tuesday, uh, and the parents would be like, "No, she's not with us. We thought she was with you." And so, again, you have this this three to four day gap where no one knows Brianna's even missing. Wow, yeah, and that, that was just kind of sadly because of the lifestyle. She kind of being transient. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a shame. Uh, quickly, uh, K Dog, new to Mob Crew, really appreciate your objective coverage in layman's terms for easy understanding, and of course, your coverage of the missing. Uh, thank you so much, K Dog. It's uh, an honor to give back. Uh, I've been blessed to have this platform, and I would not be here for those for the viewers. Uh, you guys make this what it is. Um, I just catch up on these. Vizzy, thank you so much for the five dollars. I'm sorry, I can't pull up your uh thing right now it, i kind of disappeared somewhere uh my apologies and there's one more it's saying something to uh another one from k-dog thank you uh and congrats jason on getting your pi saw you appreciate on that. london arts i believe appreciate you I wish you the best appreciate that thank you very much that's awesome. so the, uh the name of the book again is the hunt for, the hunt for brianna maitland written by greg oberacker uh, yes. Now, one really cool thing about this is uh, Brianna Maitland's father, Bruce, has since started a 503 nonprofit nonprofit uh, organization called Private Investigations for the Missing. Uh, oh. the, goal, the goal of the nonprofit is to provide private investigators to families of missing people at no cost. Private investigators can be very, very expensive. Expensive. Yeah. Some of those guys, they'll charge two or three hundred dollars an hour plus expenses. Oof, yeah, and up. easily rack up to your fork and over fifteen hundred dollars a week just to just to have your loved one's case and in, investigated. And no average family can afford that. So Bruce wanted to start this organization up. Um, oh, wow. That's actually Ladessa. <laughs> I'll call her back. Uh, but uh, 
So anyway, yeah, Bruce wanted to start this organization to to help families that are in the same position he is. And this proceeds from this book will help go fund that organization. Now, just so everybody knows, this organization does not benefit Brianna's case. Bruce is not using his nonprofit to investigate his daughter's case at all. He is strictly using it to help other families. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like an amazing guy. Um, and uh, here is, I wish I would have found a, a good spot. Uh, can you get that on Amazon? I see uh, the hunt. Uh... So the name of the publishing company is called the bloated toe. Yes. That's what I got. I, I'll put the yeah, link. Yeah. Post that link. So there yeah, I go. definitely highly. I'll put that oh, link in there right now. Pick up some papers here. But... Oh, you're good managed to spill but uh yeah so uh yeah check out the book it's it's great i just finished it the other night there are he, greg talks about uh some stuff from his bounty hunting days but uh, the majority of the book is is focused on uh his his work in the brianna maitland case um he has been on the tv show disappeared uh, yes their, uh -huh. their episode on brianna he is he is in that he has also been uh, on several episodes of Crawl Space with Tim and Lance when they talk about Brianna's case. Uh, just a very, very awesome dude. I love Greg to death. Uh, I, I want to do anything I can to not only help him promote the book, since it does help the nonprofit, but also bring awareness to Brianna Maitland's case. I have been to Brianna Ma the, that site there where that car was found in northern Vermont. Uh, the the house has since burned down. It burned down in 2016. But oh, uh, that's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, just a bunch of local kids screwing around, burning up. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that was the first site of a missing person that I was was at, and I felt really bothered to be there. Uh huh. Sure. Sure. Yeah. A little different atmosphere, and yeah. No, I. I completely understand that um let's see what else do we got um any luck on that uh go fund me at all uh no i have not been given the link if so. if not if um yeah it's all good it's all good. i was gonna say you could always contact me after the show and i could put it in the description of Great. this live show uh and i'll put it right at the top for them uh to see it uh that way they can go and if they would like to donate to that uh and that gofundme is for uh, it's for the jason, it's for jason landry search team yes uh, okay we we do uh incur some expenses some of our volunteers come from out of town sure we, we you know there's some hotel costs that are involved uh fuel costs uh, yeah. equipment rentals we we rent some atvs um yeah yeah so it's it, it's not always a cheap thing to do, but, uh, uh, yeah. So we're, we're definitely looking for anybody that's willing to help us out with that. Yeah. That's, that's awesome what you do. And, uh, yeah, if I get those details, I'll be more than happy to put them in, the in the, in the description. And then maybe the next live show that I do, I can, I can mention it as well. Uh, yeah, I anything I can do. I can't believe we already burned through an hour, man. That's crazy. It, it goes so fast. It, it really does. It uh, also, we are looking for volunteers to join the search team. I mean, I don't know if anybody in uh, in the audience is near the Austin, Texas area or, or anywhere in Texas or anywhere else that they'd be willing to travel to. But we are always looking for good, uh, like-minded people to, to come out and help with the search. Um, the best thing I can tell you to do is to... Uh, go to Jason's Facebook page. That's missing person, Jason Landry. Okay. And if you uh, want to volunteer to be a part of the search, just message that group and they will get in touch with uh, either myself or one of the other uh, team leaders. Okay. Let me see if I can pull that. What is going on? My bookmarks here. Uh, geez, uh, there should be this one here. Let's yep, see. missing person, Jason Landry. Booyah. Okay, so any details? Um, I will post that as well. So give me a second, guys. Here. Um, not to get too much off topic, but what 
what do you think about uh, this week and uh, some cold cases being solved, like the finding Suzanne Morphew? I know that's not solving the case, but at least it is a step in the right direction. Um, I don't know if you followed the um, uh, the Crystal Rogers or the Bardstown. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah, uh, Brooks Haugs finally arrested. Another guy arrested. Yeah, the one that really blew me away, I was not expecting, was the the arrest in Tupac Shakur. Yeah, and then that's what I was going to go. Yeah. I mean, apparently this guy had been blabbing about this, uh, but. Yeah, snitched out himself. Yeah, for that to just poof happen, that one kind of threw me back a little bit. But That I, was one case I think I in my lifetime uh, at this point I thought would never be solved because it was oh, like I, pretty yeah, much everybody yeah. was, yeah, has, has died. Uh, that's been involved and that guy has been at the forefront of so many documentaries uh, i mean yeah, he's the no guy one. that you see the most like in a lot of the documentaries the kpd guy um, yeah absolutely are you on you're not are you on a time constraint i'm not i mean i've got um no I've, but i'll probably finish in the next 10 20 minutes i got my buddy yeah, steve yeah. i know he starts a show uh, about this time and i um, i just i was just gonna try to Answer yeah, you, more questions from the or, yeah yeah if you see from you or from the crowd I love these uh, you know doing this kind of thing it's always important because it helps keep people engaged you know and it, it, it uh, they see that the case is being worked on and they naturally have questions and I'm happy to answer what I can there's always going to be things that I have to keep close to the chest but sure. I, I like that community interaction I think it's a very very uh, key thing uh, whenever you have uh, you know. A, really whether it's a missing person case or an unsolved murder or any kind of crime uh it's 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 important to to have that community engagement oh hey we got one i'm in uh lone pony i'm in the area already signing up there we go hey, I look right forward, on. Uh, we we do a little we have an interview process that we go through uh so i'm looking forward to to seeing that yeah right on be good to lone pony <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, uh, I'm sure he's. He, I'll, I'll be more than happy. I, yeah. I, I'm a. That's awesome. I'm, I'm an extrovert. I love meeting people and I love talking to people. So I'm always, I'm, I'm always thrilled when, when, uh, when new people come on board. Yeah, well, we'll definitely have to have you on some more. Uh, you know, um, usually weekends. I'm assuming it's probably a little easier for you. Or is that just going to depend uh, on? Depending, yes. Well, obviously you're going to be busy next weekend. Um, oh yeah, you bet. Yeah. Um, do you work? I was going to ask you. Do you work with Texas EquiSearch much? Uh, I have met them. Uh, uh -huh. I can't remember how to say his last name. I know his first name, Sean. He's like the head honcho at Texar. I've I have met him. Uh -huh. uh, great guy. Um, they seem to be very dedicated. Yes. Uh, they are very, very focused and, and uh, you know, hardworking on, on Jason's case. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, they're great. Yeah, yeah. Amazing people. I, I did get the chance to work with them on the Dylan Rounds case. And uh, um, I had one guy, uh, Tony, uh, he and he's usually pops in the chat uh, quite a bit. And uh, he's a, uh, Part of the team but he also uh, knows a lot about drones and uh he taught me so much I, I say this all the time when i see tony uh because I, I literally i i was just a baby uh but when uh once he was done teaching me i i felt like you know i, I could i know yeah. how to use this drone there's just so much that i, I learned from him um which uh, is very important when you're using a drone to find somebody um absolutely um it's huge question i saw where was it was jason landry under any kind of emotional duress yes he was um so again he went missing right kind of in the highlight of COVID, december of 2020 oh, so, that's true yeah uh, and again he's a college student but COVID, you know all the in-class study is shut down so you're doing everything virtually so you're basically shut in your apartment yeah and uh, Jason was an extrovert. He liked to go out and have that. Oh, life. was he? Yeah. Oh, interesting. He loved to interact with other people and meet new people. And when you're locked in your dorm room, that can really start to play with your psyche. Sure. Uh, 
Yeah, it, I mean, it did a lot of us that way, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he and he had recently uh, broken up with his girlfriend. I don't know who oh. initiated the breakup. Uh, uh -huh. They remained on good terms. They were on good terms with each other after the breakup. But so not a nasty breakup. So, no, I mean, that's that, not bad. No, so, yeah. yeah. I, I think it was he, she moved, he moved, so, something like that. Some kind of a long distance. Oh, yeah, because yeah, he did just yeah. move. Sure. Yeah. yeah that makes yeah. sense. There was, there was no bad blood or anything. It's just a breakup. Yeah. But, uh, Happens that, all the time. Did, you know, that obviously made him a little down. Yeah. Uh, one thing I want to add, Wild Mustang, how rude, Ad. Yeah, uh, YouTube has changed their thing. Uh, now they're adding uh, ads during the live shows. Uh, this is to help us creators. Um, I do have the option to switch, like, if it's low, medium, or high as far as the volume ad you get. I do switch it to the lowest, just to let you guys know. Um, even though that hurts me a little bit, but... Uh, at the very least, I'm, I'm still getting a little bit ad revenue, but uh, yeah, they're they're trying to do things to help us creators get a little bit more revenue because uh, they do take a quite a big percentage, which is a, a bummer. But um, hey, Chris, I got a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Would you ever be interested in coming down and participating in a search? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I came back from Texas. Uh, we were out there in May, uh, working oh, yeah, on the 40 year old cool yeah, days. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and had a great time out there in Texas. God, it was, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Uh, a little hot, but, uh, uh, a little hot's an understatement. <laughs> yeah. We made it. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I have the same question for you as one time, uh, you know, I'd love to have you maybe come, you know, uh, cause like I said, I would work with Steve from true crime web. He's obviously former, uh, forensic detective and uh he's got a great mind for this kind of stuff um and just uh have a great uh think tank together to work on some of these cases but yeah if there's a future one uh, i'd be more than happy to, to help out and yeah um, it, we definitely it, have a, a few more uh plan for the remainder of the year if we do not find him on this next search Oh, a couple more uh, plan Sorry. beyond this. Yeah. So yeah. I saw a comment, I think the one uh, from a lady here. Uh, How far is Mustang Ridge? That was left by Why Wonder. I'm assuming she's asking how far is Mustang Ridge from Luling? Uh, according to my Google Maps, about 26 minutes. Uh, Mustang Ridge? Yeah, I think that's where I'm guessing that's where she's saying she, she lives and wants to know how far oh. she is from, from oh. Jason. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, here let's see. Um must there it is. It is approximately 30 minutes. Yeah, just a straight shot south, really. Hop, skip and a jog. Yeah, that's that's not too far. Um I live three hours from, from Lulee. Oh, do you? Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 uh, I'll, I should probably quit doing this because I'm getting older and I'm, I'm, I don't, oh. I don't recover from uh, travel as quick as I used to. But, uh, like if it's huh. just on a Saturday, uh, we'll usually start the search around seven in the morning. I'll get up and drive at 3 a.m. and drive the three hours. Oh, and wow. Search all day. And then sometimes I'll drive back that same night uh, if I can't participate in Sunday. Uh, and then sometimes we'll crash in a hotel, we'll get back up at six in the morning and go for it again. And we'll we'll search from sun up to sundown. That's awesome. That's awesome. And and, and that's amazing. Um, <clears throat> we, we need more people like yourself. Um, and ah. there, there is a lot of people. Uh, to help out these families that, uh, like you said, can't afford to pay for all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah. You know, in, in this day and age, you know, we, we watch the news and we watch all that. And a lot of the media portrays the world as a very bad place now. And, and I don't deny that it, parts of it are bad. But when you get out and you, you do this kind of work, you really see the good that's still left in humanity. So true. And that's why I encourage people to, I mean, whether it's a missing person's case or you're just volunteering at a local church or, or whatever, volunteer work will, will really help you see the bright side of humanity. And 
unfortunately, I don't think it's a it's it's a thing that's seen a lot in mainstream media like it should be. You know, yeah, there's there's evil in the world, but there's also still a lot of good, man. There is. And obviously, you can sens- sensationalize the evil, and that's going to appeal, sadly, just as it makes great stories. Whereas, uh, yeah. The good um, can make really good stories, too, if you if you look for it. Yeah. Uh, uh, one more question I did have for you, Chris. Sure. How, I know you you live in Utah? Yeah. How close are you to Denver, Colorado? Uh, as far as the time, let's see. Um, and there's a the reason I'm asking you this. I'll make it clear in a minute. Yeah. Um, is there a certain part, uh, Denver uh, just in Denver. particular? Just Denver Denver itself. I'll, I'll... Oh, yeah. I, don't know. I, I don't know that part of the country too well. I've been to Las Vegas, but as far as like Utah, Colorado. Oh, so it's a seven hour, eight hour drive. Uh, I guess Ooh. kind of different. Uh, yeah, about eight the hour reason, drive. The reason I asked you this. Yeah, because next year, 2024, the True Crime Podcast Festival. It's a festival. I'm 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 blessed to, to be able to attend. The people that run it are great. Next year's True Crime Podcast Festival will be in Denver, Colorado, in July. And interesting, you should be there. Uh, you should have a booth set up for your podcast. You should. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, I, I will definitely think about that. Um, that's awesome. So a little something different from the crime con. Uh, it, it's kind of a mini crime con in a way. But yeah. I think it's it's crime con is great. I love crime con, but uh, I think the true crime podcast festival is, in some ways, it's it's more intimate, and I think that's because it's it's a little bit smaller. So there's not. Oh like, yeah, makes yeah. sense. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, I, I wanted to in, encourage you if you're interested to to attend that. I will be there. At least I'm planning to be there. So uh, I do will... we have a date set or just a oh, date? So, just... I know it's in July. Okay. I don't know the exact date. I can look that up. And it is open to the public. So if anybody in the audience wants to attend the True Crime Podcast Festival, I highly encourage it. It's a chance. To come out and meet your favorite podcasters. I know Generation Y attends, uh, Navigating Advocacy attends, uh, uh, Call Your Landry and Tara Newell from Suicide or not Suicide Squad, uh, Survivor Squad. They attend. There's a lot of a lot of true crime podcasts that attend. That's and, awesome. That's yeah, awesome. Uh, but they also do live panels and discussions about cases and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So that's uh, that's always cool. Um, oh, so the, the dates are July 12th and 14th. Interesting. Yeah, I'll uh, definitely keep that in mind. Um, yeah, that'd be really cool. Uh, of course, uh, it, I'm sure a lot of uh, us true crimers, uh, you know, Crime Con is, you know, one thing we'd love to go, you know, or be hosted, you know, or whatever. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, this this would be cool as hell, uh, especially you know being a more smaller thing. Uh, but yeah, that's awesome. Um, Helen, why don't they show live chat replay anymore? They do. Uh, what happens is once the live's done, um, it has to take a while to process. So you have to get about an hour or two after the show's done for the live chat replay to uh, populate. It, it just depends how long the live show it, itself is. Um, but yes, you, you will get uh, the live chat replay. Just it takes time to uh, for them to repopulate the the chat there. Um, before we go, uh, anything else that you would like to add on, uh, Jason? That uh, uh, just thank you, Chris, for having me on. Uh, I always oh, love, yeah. I always enjoy and love these chats with you, brother. Thank you to the live audience that uh, comes and watches these live streams and engages and wants to know more about these cases and, and supports the people that are working on them. Uh, just thank you. I, I can't say thank you enough. You know, the good Lord has blessed me with the ability to do this and, and uh, he's, he's blessed me with good people and that includes you and the audience. So I'm, I'm just thankful for, for him and for all of you guys and you, Chris. I, I appreciate that. And that, that that goes to you guys in the chat because I wouldn't be where I'm at for if it wasn't for you guys taking the time out of your day to watch the show, support it, donations and stuff like that. And, you know, of course, I say this all the time. Those donations 
uh, those go towards, you know, our, uh, our searches that we've done, you know, we've went out to Dior's, uh, did Dylan rounds, uh, multiple times. Um, and then of course we went to Texas this year, uh, working on a 40 year old cold case, still actually waiting on, uh, some results from, I have to use the word artifact, uh, for right now that we found, uh, we're actually still waiting on that. Um, but yeah, all that stuff wouldn't be able to help these families out if it wasn't for you guys. And, um, but um, let me just double check chat before. Uh, yeah, and be sure to pick up a copy of The Hunt for Brianna Mayland. Yeah, I've got it up here um, and I've got the link in the chat. And what I'll do is after the show, I will put the link to that in the description for those that we watch. Um, and then if you get me the details on the GoFundMe, I'll be happy to post that. And I'll yeah, yeah, you bet. mention I'll that you. in an upcoming live show as well. Um, let's see. Chris, oh, let's see. Chris, the problem is YouTube phone app makes you slide the comment area to see the live chat replay when it is there. It is really hard to slide it. Huh? I'll have to look into that. Um, that's a bummer. That's weird. Interesting. Um, of course, uh, thank you to everybody that donated. Um, and uh, just let me double check. Uh, I didn't miss anything else before we wrap up. And then, uh, yeah, uh, maybe we'll definitely have you on again. Uh, maybe to. after your, your search or something, especially if there's something. And then always uh, feel free to let me know. Email me and uh, be happy to have you on. Appreciate that. Yeah, I'll um, definitely keep in touch. And uh I'll let you know. I'll, I'll shoot you a text and let you know how it goes. The after the next search, I'm really looking forward to getting back out there. Awesome, buddy! And I, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, hopefully, uh, this this one will be it, and uh, you guys get the answers uh, that uh, you and the family uh, definitely deserve. Uh, so, uh, thank you again so much for coming on, buddy. And uh, yeah, brother. I'm gonna put you put you backstage. Uh, you can stay or you can. Uh, yeah, I'll probably go. top off. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah you you're good, buddy. Um, thank you, and thank yep. you to everyone in the chat. Y'all all have a blessed evening. Thanks so much, buddy. All right, uh, shout out to Jason Watts, man. That's so awesome for him taking the time to to come on the show. Um, and thank you guys as always. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm probably running into Steve's live show. My apologies. So I'm going to end it now. And so uh, for those that are uh, subscribed to Steve's channel, uh, please go check out his show. I think he's live probably now or maybe waiting for me to end my show. So I'm going to go ahead and end it. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to do a pit outro so I can end it just in case if he's waiting for me to end it so uh of course shout out to all my wonderful mods copper horse d karen uh jocelyn um i think uh i think i'm with sog mckaylin here uh they do an amazing job and uh we are going to do something for the the mods uh before the year ends so with that said i love you guys and we'll, we'll be back on Monday, uh, most likely with Steve from True Crime Web uh, with the, another case update. So with that, have a wonderful weekend, and I love you guys, and we'll see you Monday.